Hey, you got some more from Zoe. It's Casey from Cape Town. How you doing? How you doing? Now, yeah, everyone who watches my videos knows that I that I do enjoy this, which is the Tor and Beast from Thunder Creations. And then they released a MTL RTA, which I got very excited about. And when it came to South African shores, I just had to purchase one for myself. It is a 24 millimeter MTL RTA. It's going to be a single coil RTA. Construction is going to be stainless steel. It's going to house two milliliters of juice and it's got an humongous amount of little airflow holes. So in any case, without any further ado, let's go down for a closer view. Okay, the RTA is housed in this bag, which is actually a signature from Thunderhead Creations. And you've also got a nice little key tab, which is actually included this time. If we open up the bag, what is going to be on the inside is, number one, this little cylinder, which contains the MTL RTA, a flathead screwdriver, then you're going to get a little baggie, and additionally, you also get a container with a spare glass on the inside. What's inside the little bag is a warranty card, a manual, a spare 510 drip tip, narrow bore, put two o-rings on the bottom, five spare grub screws, of which three of them are flatheads and two of them are allen keys, a huge amount of spare o-rings, allen key, and a little baggie with cotton and two coils of which they actually provide the specs. Okay, so looking at the cylinder in which you're going to get the RTA though, the information on it is in front over there. At the top you've got Thunderhead Creations, there you've got a little authenticity barcode and at the bottom there's an indication of what's in the bag, including the cylinder. Opening it up, you've got some threading at the bottom, so all you do is you just unthread this little guy and then expose your RTA. The one which you're going to get is not going to look like mine. I did not like the look of it, of the cage, so I actually modified mine a bit though. But you will get yours with these six-sided holes everywhere. And all I did is I combined my holes like this. So yours will not look like this. Only mine. Any case, to get this off, obviously, you just unthread it over there, the little base. Right, so first things first. There you've got some nice knurling over there. So just catch onto that little top part and then you can unthread. And there you will see is your juice ports on the inside. The threading on this is actually very, very nice. Very nice. And you've got to press down slightly because you can see you've got an O-ring situated over there. But I mean, it's just a gentle push then and then now the thing actually screws on very, very nicely or threads on very nicely. And it's actually cool. And then at the bottom, you will actually see what makes this guy interesting is the airflow. Now, if you remove the airflow control ring, which I first want to quickly show you, then you will see you start off with those six holes, which is supposed to give you the maximum airflow for this RTA. And then as you move all along, there's a groove which is cut in there. And that groove becomes more shallow and thinner as you actually move on. Um, which means that when you turn your airflow control ring, because this guy is the same everywhere, that groove doesn't do anything. I mean, it's just aesthetics over there. But that hole which you've got over there actually passes along that groove. And then because the groove changes in depth and width, it's going to minimize or maximize the airflow which you actually have. Okay, so there you actually see your six holes. And as we start turning, you should be able to see that that groove on the inside over there becomes more narrow and more narrow and more narrow and more narrow. You can actually see it. It shouldn't be too hard to see. There you go. And that is the end then. Then obviously your airflow is closed over there. Same thing. So going back, 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 it becomes wider, 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 wider. If I speed it up, it's easier to see. Until you get to the point where you get those six holes. So yeah, that's actually very, very innovative. To remove the bottom to actually access your building deck, you are just going to unwind it over there and that's what our building deck looks like. And there you can see, you've actually got a very nice diffuser in there. And that little diffuser contains 61 small little holes. There's going to be your wicking ports where you're actually going to put through your cotton and then juice is going to actually come in from the underside and saturate your cotton for you. Dual little posts where you're going to put in your coil legs and you can see you've got your gold plated allen key grub screws. All the spares, however, are stainless in color. 
So these are the only two which is gold plated. And there you can actually see the nice nailing on the airflow control ring. And then if we go on the underside, you've got a serial number at the bottom, Thunderhead Creations. And there's our 510. I'm going to show you something interesting. Now obviously if you remove your 510, check up on the inside there. Now right, just bear them in mind there, there's that peak insulation which is loose. Just collect that and put it underneath under your, on your screw and just put it to one side. Especially if you're going to clean this guy. Because if you're going to forget that peak insulation in there and you're going to clean this guy, you're going to, you're going to, you might lose it though. So when we loosen that, this little guy comes out. And if you turn this little guy, there, just over there, there you're going to see a little notch there. There you will see is where that little notch is going to go in. And then it's actually going to be easy just to press it in. And there is an O-ring right at the bottom, which this guy actually presses on. So yeah, there you go. Now that's perfect though. If you don't put it in correctly, just turn it. And there you, all of a sudden it goes in completely. Yeah. All right. But yeah, just look at this airflow. Though. Your airflow is going to come in there, those small little holes. And then this guy, actually very, very interesting. If we remove this bottom base now. Just look at that little airflow ramp. If you put in this little guy correctly, it's going to sit like that. Your airflow is actually going to come through those small little holes and go up this ramp. <laughs> it's actually very cute. And then after it goes up that little ramp, it's going to enter this section over there. And there you can see your diffuser right at the bottom. So yeah, so you can actually take this apart, which is very, very nice. So putting this little guy back is actually very easy. There you can see your peak insulation is actually a bit thicker over that side. You can see it protruding. And that is going to fit into that little hole. So yeah, it's actually very, very simple to reassemble this little guy. And then you're going to use this long screw. It's going to go in that side. And then you just use your Phillips head screwdriver. Just to screw it back in. There you go, nice and tight. And then this guy is going to be almost automatically aligned. And, and then you just screw this little guy in as well. There you go reassemble back again so if you put this little guy back just look at that notch and look at your little airflow and that's approximate area and there it goes easy as pie and then this little guy with the peak insulation we are just going to put back with a flathead screwdriver and bob's your uncle on the underside there you can see our glass that is fitted up against this cage now because they include a spare glass you can actually there has to be a way to remove this glass, but it's not easy to remove it. What I actually did is I got myself just a very thin little flathead. And then I just worked my way there. Just slightly. There you go. And then you can clean it though and go, go ahead. And that's what I had to do when I actually did my cut in here, when I used my Dremel to cut these grooves in there um, I had to actually remove this and that's the way in which I actually did remove it though so putting it back you just got to remember to just give it an extra push because there is an o-ring at the top there you go and that is in at the moment so yeah and it's because this glass is so thick and so actually so close to the barrel that this guy no matter whether it's a 24 millimeter actually just takes two milliliters of juice so if you screw this guy back on There you go, all the way to that side. And because your airflow control ring actually locks in place, it's going to lock on there, which is going to allow you to tighten this guy. And the same with when you loosen this, your airflow control ring is going to move all the way to the one side, all the way until it locks in place there. And then you can actually unwind this. But there is a bit of a squeakiness here. So yeah, let's do a build on this. Okay, coil I'll be using is one of the 2.5 millimeter diameter Clapton coils which they have provided. I'm walking alone, the streets are empty. The only thing I can see is my own silhouette. I'm getting stronger, step by step. The clock is ticking, but there's no time for me. I've been flying from town to town
RTA. So yeah, let's quickly give it a vape airflow wide open though on its six little holes. I'm vaping it at 25 watts coming in at 0 0.63 ohms. So yeah, hopelessly too loose for an MTL for my liking though. So yeah, you might as well go for a restricted direct lung, which I'm not going to do now because it's 12 milligrams of juice in here. But by rotating this airflow ring, you can actually tune in zone in on the, the vape which you actually like and it does adjust very nicely with a double knurling situation on the airflow control ring so yeah, that's cool beans still too loose let's give it another swirl getting there getting there another one that's better better slightly more slightly more and that's them apples. In general, this guy's got very nice machining as well though. It's just that I find that the threading, when I actually want to remove the top cap, not the top cap, when I want to remove the top section from the build deck, I get a bit squeakiness over there. So yeah, there you've just got to put some VG, put some lubing in there. But the top, top cap itself actually threads off very, very nicely and puts on very nicely as well. There's a lot of O-rings in this guy. I don't suspect this guy is going to leak because it's just got too many seals everywhere. There's O-rings everywhere in this guy. You saw the amount of spares which they give, and that's another pro. They do include a spare tank. They do include spare a huge amount of spare O-rings, different grub screws if you don't like this, five in total, and you only need two grub screws in any case. Um, I'm not a fan of these drip tips, but at least, and that's both of them. I don't like either one of them, but at least they've got a flat base at the top, so you can actually um, have a variety of drip tips which actually would fit on there, your own 510s. I actually um, adapted my cage, did some cutouts just to give it a different pattern because I didn't like those six sided or those hexagonal, hexagonal holes or cutouts which they actually had on, on the, um, the cage itself. And then getting out the glass is also difficult, but it can be done. Cleaning this guy, you can, it's very nice to clean it there, except. The, because the cage is actually attached to this top section though with your barrel um, and your chimney underneath so it's just cleaning out that area getting in cotton in there or getting in wipes in there is going to be actually hard but otherwise the fact that your whole building can dissemble and I mean it's interesting I love the airflow on this thing I mean especially on the inside when you start going to inspect and you see that golden slide which takes up air directly underneath and then you've got the diffuser as well and that's going to allow for very smooth airflow and it, and it does it does have very smooth airflow and another bummer is the fact that it's only two mils i mean it's a 24 millimeter rta but because their glass is so thick and they've got the cage as well on the outside there's not a lot of capacity or not a lot of room for your juice two mils bit of a bummer and they don't have a bubble glass option etc because this cage is attached to the same section to which your barrel is so there's no way in which you're going to get a bubble glass for this to fit and it also doesn't look too bad after i made this modification it actually looks half decent though it is available in four different colors though i'll post a picture over there and then you can also see what this actually looks like when you're going to actually get this though now youtube is very funny you're not allowed to mention any websites etc etc so this has landed on south african shores and if you want to know where i got mine and if you want to get yours use that so i just want to thank craig for providing us with this discount option 
Now regarding the flavor on this guy, um, your flavor is going to be on par with most of the other MTL RTAs. I've had MTL RTAs which are worse, I've had MTL RTAs which are better than this though. But for the, the way in which you can adjust this airflow, for the smoothness of the vape which you're going to get, for the ease of build, those little holes in your coil posts could be slightly bigger than that though. I just find um, that you do struggle a bit though when you actually want to put your little coils inside there. So besides the negatives which I said I don't like though, all in all, it's not a bad MTL RTA. I actually enjoyed playing around with it and enjoyed using it though. And I'm getting a nice rum and maple vape from it at the moment. So yeah. So you came, you saw, you decide. This is Kaiser signing over now. Cheers. Eh?